Today I'm going to be going over how to use HTML templates in Golang using the standard library. So right now you see we have our home handler, which is just printing hello world with plain text, but we want to change this to actually render dynamic HTML from our server. So the first thing we can do is just create a new folder. We'll call it HTML and then we'll move into HTML and we'll create a home.html file. And then we can open that up in our editor. And then we can just define a simple HTML file here. We'll title it home and we'll just have a home page title for our H1 tag. Now we can go back and in order to display this page in the browser, we have to actually render it from our server. So to do that, we're going to define it in our home handler function instead of just putting the plain text. In order to do so, we're going to define a local template variable and set that equal to the template.must of template.parse files of our HTML slash home.html. So must is basically a helper that wraps the function and it will panic if the error is non nil. Parse files and returns an error. As you can see here, it also returns an error, but must is basically ensuring that this function runs successfully. And parse files is basically creating a new template and parsing the template definitions from the named files. So it's just going to take this HTML slash home.html and parse it and then return it. And it will set that into this local temple variable. And then from there, we can just simply uh, execute it. So if we have if error equals template.execute, and we'll check if the error is not equal to nil. If so, if there is an error, we'll panic. Generally, you don't want to panic, but again, for a demo purpose, this is fine. This will just terminate the program if there's an error. Normally, you'd want to have better error handling and not just crash the program whenever you run into an exception. This is all it takes to render HTML from our Go application. So we can restart our server and go back we have a home handler and it's still on this root level route on port 8080 on all interfaces so if we go to our browser localhost 8080 you can see before it was the plain text hello world now we should refresh it and see html and so there we go we've got the home page now that's rendered and you can see this matches what we have here in our html document so that's pretty useful, but what if you want to put dynamic data in as most sites aren't going to be that useful if it's just static information to do this, we can simply define these variables in our HTML file directly. So in here, we can have a dot title if we want to dynamically render the title for each HTML page. And then we can go back to here and define it. As you can see, our local template execute is passing nil as the second parameter. Normally it takes a response writer and it's also taking data with an any type. Normally you want a map in this case. So we can pass this as a map. Now we can define our data as a map so we'll say data equals map, and then let it autocomplete for us, and we'll set our title to be home page. So instead of passing nil here, we can now pass data. We'll restart our application and then go to our browser and refresh, and we'll see that this title in the browser should change the home page. And there we go, it's dynamically being changed depending on this data passed from Go. We're in a Go file and passing this, it's not being set in our HTML. We can also add other types. And we can use that to craft things such as if statements or for loops in our template. To start off, we'll add a Boolean value. And for that, we'll just set it to as access. So for instance, if you were making some SaaS application and you wanted to check if the user has access to your application through like a subscription platform, you could check the database or that platform and then return this Boolean value when you render the template. So I'll set this, for instance, that they have access. And we have to change this from a string to any because it's having both Boolean and string values in its values. Now it's already being passed to our template with the execute function. So we'll simply have to just go back here and add an if statement for it. And we can do that with the if dot has access. And then we'll put a just a paragraph that says you have access. And we can also add an else as well. So we can have an else p you do not have access. And then we can display our title above it. And we'll restart our server again go to our browser and because we set has access to true, we should expect it to have access. See, we get you have access. Now let's change this to false, rerun our server, go back and now we don't have access. Now this is very useful. Now what if we want something like an uh, array of values? So we can just say a users array and define that to be a string of user one, user two and user three. Then we can go over to our home.html file and just create a user section 
and then we're gonna loop over our users here and then just print out each user individually. And for that, we only need a single dot. And that's because dots are simply rendering the root element. And because we're already looping over these users here, it's accessing each element individually and that only requires a dot. You can think of these dot has access, dot users and dot title as rendering each key within the map that we're passing. As you can see, it's a string here and they're defined here. But because we only have an array, we only need to pass a dot here. So we can restart our server and go back to our browser and refresh and we should see the three users listed. And there we go. So what if we had a list of structs we wanted to pass? So we can define a struct and we'll set a title and body for each post. And then in here, we can simply render these posts dynamically again. You can see we're passing an array of post structs and we'll just format this a little better so you can see it clearly. And you can see it's creating two structs here, each with a title and body. And we can go to our templates and then render these posts. And we'll range over the posts as well. And because we're in this scope of this range, we are able to access these individually, similar to how we did it with the list. You can see it's scoped to this specific range block. And then we're accessing the title and body. So similar to how we access the title and has access from the map directly. Now that we're in that range block and we're iterating over this post, we can just access the title and body here. So we'll restart our server, go back to our browser, refresh, and you see we get the posts with our post one and body one and post two and body two, and that lines up with the data that we passed. Now, what if we wanted to render something such as a block of code or another partial template? What if we had something like a nav bar we wanted to render? So it's actually not that hard. We can create a navbar.html and open that in our editor. And then we can simply use this define keyword to define the navbar and then end it as well because we're defining a navbar block. And then we're just gonna simply create a navbar. It's gonna fill in some tailwind styling for us, but we don't have that imported in our project, so it doesn't matter. And then you can see it's just creating some links for us, but this would be a sample navbar in your application. So we define this template and we want to render it here. So we just simply add a template navbar and we put a dot as well afterwards. And then there's one other step we have to take is we have to go back to our main function and ensure that the parse files is realizing that this is another thing we want to include. So we can add the HTML slash navbar.html partial file and we can restart our server. And if we go to and refresh, we'll see that we have this very poorly formatted navbar but it is rendering and it's a great way to reuse code and it definitely helps for code reusability between projects. This nav bar will also contain the other data that's passed. So you can simply check if has access here as well and do things accordingly. So we can treat that as if there was something like a login or logout. I know has access doesn't align with it, but if we restart our server, and go there, you can see it's log out. If we change has access back to true, you'll see that it's now log in. You have access is also still changing correctly. Besides templates, there's also things called blocks, which do the exact same thing as a template. It will render the partial that's passed in. However, you can also define default code if there is nothing there. So we'll just create an H1 with default content and we don't even need to pass anything and it'll still run without an error. So you should refresh and we'll see default content. If we go here, we have to define a new file of content. So we'll just create a content.html and we can define this contents block. Make sure we end it. And then we'll put a paragraph and say, this is custom content. And now we see that this define content is matching with this block content. And then when we go to main.go, we have to simply add this as well. So we'll do HTML slash contents.html. And if we restart our server and go here and refresh, you'll see we're getting this is custom content now. So blocks and templates are a great way to dynamically render certain parts of your pages without having to specify the entire page. For instance, I can just define this head once and even add dynamic blocks within it if I need custom head tags in each page. I don't have to rewrite it for every single page. One last thing I want to show is that the order of parse files matters. So you always want to pass the file that will be rendering first. 
So if we have this and run it, we'll see this works. But if we were to change this to be navbar first and then home here, and you start your server refresh, it won't error out, but it won't display anything because it's trying to render navbar and it's just a define block. It doesn't actually have the default block that's rendering the templates and the block of content. It has nothing here. Hope you found this video useful. Again, if there's any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.